So let's continue with our study of the Mendelian genetics and in this case we're going to look at some special cases. And these special cases are codominance and incomplete dominance and in both of these situations we're going to use what's called a multiple allele situation. So we'll explain that in just a second but in this case we're going to see a blending of traits or a combination of traits to give us unique outcomes of offspring. So we call this a multiple allele situation because what we're going to do is we'll still use a capital letter for the dominant trait but we're going to add a superscript which will tell us that there are multiple dominant or recessive traits involved. So you'll see the capital letter showing it's a dominant trait and then you'll have a superscript to distinguish each dominant trait that is present. For common, uh, codominance what we're looking at is a form of genetic inheritance where two traits appear at the same time simultaneously and since both are appearing simultaneously what we get is a phenotype that is unique and different from either of the two parents. So in this case if we have a red trait and a white trait and then both of them appear we get this kind of peppered looking red or pinkish trait and that would be the com combination of the two dominant traits being shown simultaneously. This would be an example of codominance. So an example would be if we have this mottled red sweater. This mottled red sweater is created by a combination of red and white yarn. And you can distinguish each of the fibers. You can see the red fibers, you can see the white fibers, but when they combine and both are present, you get this faded red, almost pink, sweater. So the outcome of the combination of the two traits gives you another phenotype that is different from the two parents. So we'll begin with an example from flowers and in this case we're going to use the camellia flower and camellia flowers come in red, they come in white, and then you get this unique modeling of the red and white giving us a pink white camellia flower. Now that pink white flower has some white petals, has some pinkish or red petals, and together you get this combination of the two traits. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose an allele, and I chose the capital letter F for flower, and then we use the superscript R for red, because whenever we have a codominant trait, we're going to use that superscript. So our genotype is F capital R, F capital R. For the white flower, we still use the capital F for flower, but the superscript now is W because white is a codominant trait. So the genotype for a white flower is F capital W, F capital W. When you combine a red and white allele, you get the F capital R, F capital W, and this is where we get the combination mottled pink-white camellia flower. So just as we did with standard Mendelian genetics, we can break this down using a Punnett square. So in this case, we're going to cross a red and a white camellia flower. The red flower, F capital R, F capital R, the white flower, F capital W, F capital W, we segregate the alleles just as we did in the past. So for the red flower on the top, FR over one column, FR over the other column. For the white flower on the left, we have FW for the top row and FW for the bottom row. When you cross them just as you did before, like a multiplication table, we get an FR, FW in each of the offspring boxes. So when you cross a red and a white camellia, you'll get that mottled pink camellia in all cases. 
Now, just as we did with standard Mendelian genetics, we do have a genotypic ratio and a phenotypic ratio. When we break down the genotypic ratio, we're going to put the two homozygous dominant traits on the left and right, and we're going to put the heterozygous combination of the traits in the middle. So for our genotypic ratio, it's going to be FRFR, and that came out as zero. The FRFW heterozygous combination of the dominant traits is four, and the homozygous for white FWFW is again zero. So the genotypic ratio is zero to four to zero. For the phenotypic ratio, red, pink in the middle because that's the heterozygous, and white, zero to four to zero for our phenotypic ratio. So let's look at another example. In this example, we're going to cross a red flower with a pink flower. Again, we're still dealing with the camellia flowers, and our red is going to be F capital R, F capital R. Our pink is going to be F capital R, F W. When we segregate the alleles for the red, it's FR over each column. And when we segregate the pink flower on the left, FR on the top row, FW on the bottom row. We see here that we end up with two offspring that are red, FRFR, two offspring that are pink, FRFW. So our genotypic ratio comes out 2 to 2 to 0. The homozygous red first, the heterozygous pink in the middle, and the homozygous white on the right. So when we go to the phenotypic ratio, red to pink to white comes out 2 to 2 to 0. Another example of codominance are black roosters with white chickens giving us offspring that are peppered showing both black and white flowers or feathers excuse me and those black and white feathers give us this peppered appearance. So the black rooster we're going to use C for color. We're going to use the superscript B for black. So the genotype for a black rooster would be capital CB, capital CB. The white chicken, C for color. The W as a superscript for white. That gives us a genotype of CW, CW. And when we get the black, white, peppered rooster outcome, that genotype would be capital CB, capital CW. Again, these are multiple allele situations because we are using the subscript or superscript, excuse me, to demonstrate the fact that you have more than one dominant trait. So for our example, we're going to cross a black rooster with the white chicken. The black rooster goes on the top, capital C, B, capital C, B over each column. The white chicken on the left, a CW, CW for each row. All of the outcomes come out as CB, CW, meaning we're getting that peppered appearance for all of the offspring in this case. In a codominant situation, if you cross two homozygous parents, you're always going to get the heterozygous offspring. When we determine the ratios for each of these cases, the genotypic ratio always follows the homozygous for the first dominant trait, the heterozygous for the combination trait, and the homozygous dominant for the second trait. So in this case, black, we see zero. The peppered appearance, we see four. And the white, we see zero. For the phenotypic ratio, again, it's the first dominant trait, black, the combination trait peppered, and then the other dominant trait white. And in this case, when we cross those two homozygous parents, a black rooster and a white chicken, all of the offspring come out peppered. So our phenotypic ratio is zero to four to zero. For another example, we're gonna cross a peppered rooster with a white chicken. For the peppered rooster, when we segregate the alleles, 
we have a capital CB over the first column and a capital CW over the second column. The white chicken provides an allele of CW on the top row and another CW for the bottom row. In this case, two of our offspring will come out peppered and two of our offspring will come out white. So our genotypic ratio is 0 to 2 to 2 and our phenotypic ratio of black to peppered to white comes out 0 to 2 to 2. Now some other examples of codominance. We have roan bulls. Now roan bulls come in brown, they come in white, and then you'll get this appearance where you have both brown and white fur or hair on the same bull where we get this mottled appearance which is known as a roan bull. Now clownfish, you have the orange clownfish which is a dominant trait. You have the white clownfish which is also a dominant trait and when you see the codominant com combination of the two dominant traits that's where we get the standard clownfish with the orange and white striping that we are used to seeing when we see for instance the movie Nemo. Now another example is petunias. When red petunias and white petunias are crossed we end up with these very uh, striped appearance petunias showing both the red and white trait in one flower in this white striping. So petunias are another example of that codominant situation. The next video is about incomplete dominance. So combining these two videos will give you an overview of the multiple allele arrangement for genetics and Mendelian genetics. And so please watch that video so you have a firm grasp of the understanding of multiple alleles.